How often you got those in sports mode? Right now they're in relaxation mode, it seems like. I usually have them in relax mode unless I'm fucking. <laughs> <laughs> unless you're fucking or going mobile. Yeah. <laughs> if I'm in the store, four wheel, four wheel drive. What's considered four wheel drive in Crocs? Sport mode. There's li- yeah, sport, <laughs> sport mode. mode. There's only two modes on Crocs, bro. I think fucking or not fucking. <laughs> I think Crocs are the most ridiculous because they're like <laughs> shoes that have different modes of driving in them. Like you got to downshift in Crocs. It's too complicated um, for me. I can't even shift in a car. You expect me to shift in my Crocs? <laughs> yeah, well I can drive a manual, so yeah, exactly. I wear Crocs. <laughs> With that being said, ladies and gentlemen, welcome <laughs> back to NFL Picks, Locks, and Upsets. And we didn't do a mic check, but hopefully everything's working out. I think the the mic's turned up pretty good, so I'm banking on everything. If not, then you know we'll edit it in the later process. We did take a bye week last week. I know that your boy personally has been working a lot, put in a lot of hours, and Colge and Larry are two of the hardest people, hardest working people I know, so is Barnage, Barnage is not with us today, I don't know if he's going to be coming back any point in the season, but if he does, I'm assuming it's going to be more of a guest role capacity, but we do got Colge and Larry, who have been here for three seasons, back in the studio, Colge, how you doing brother? I'm doing fantastic. Uh, you know, I'm just living life. I'm wearing my Crocs, like, per use. That's my favorite thing now. I think uh, I just gotta, that's what I like doing now. I like finding a good spot in a conversation where we are before the podcast, and then I hit record. Yeah, catch us off guard. Every, Give me every time. <laughs> I'd like, I still don't understand how you guys don't see me just <laughs> hit the thing before it starts, but... I, I still think the best one we've had so far was fucking Larry talking about how he, his drinking days. <laughs> I, I never thought I'd get to Larry lacking like that. Speaking of Larry, we got Larry in the studio. How you doing, brother? Oh, I'm doing wonderful. Wonderful A's and B's, huh? Oh, yeah, you know. A's and B's and minding your P's and Q's. Oh, you know, that's the way it goes. Yep, yeah, we just keep it going, keep it rolling, and having good days. So that's the way it goes. You took the bye week this week, but... uh. The cards, they take no days off. They're five and zero. Well, they're doing well. Our defense went uh, one for five on fourth for allowing fourth down conversions. So, I mean, they stopped it four times, even on the goal line, for a touchdown. So, uh, my team played really good. We're playing hurt this week, and I hope we can keep up with another competitive game because I'd like to roll, keep the undefeated streak going. But especially with the Rams' schedule. Cakewalk for the next five weeks, so let's hope. Last week for the Cardinals, I thought was a super boring game, but sometimes when you're a good team, you know, you're going to play those boring games, good defensive matchups. This week's going to be interesting. I almost I almost wish Barnage was here for the Cards-Browns game. He's going to be up at my place for that Oh, is he going to make his return back to your house yes, for the game? Yes, so. he will. That is what has been... Heard around the league. So heard, you guys heard around watch the league. in different rooms. No, we will be fine. Well, I mean, speaking <laughs> speaking of the Browns, I mean that Browns Chargers game. I mean that's a front runner for game of the year. Cole, did you watch any bit of that or watch any highlights of that? I watched the highlights. I watched the highlights on most of the games on YouTube that I don't get to watch, but I did watch the highlights. Pretty damn good. I mean, it was a pretty dandy game. I mean, that pass interference call. I mean, when I was watching that at your house, I mean, we were watching that on, like, what, four different screens on, yeah. the, on the Sunday ticket, so, you know, I didn't really see it too clearly. Once I watched the replay on that bad call, what do you think, Larry? Oh, there's plenty of bad calls in that game that don't go in the favor of the Browns. Mm-hmm. And I think in that such a close game like that, that's like, we've talked about it, like, I don't understand why officials don't get suspended for shit like that because it means that much to franchises and fan bases every game counts and it's ridiculous that officials can get away with doing things that they're supposed to be knowing what to do week in and week out so uh, that's my feel on it and you know 
The Browns also are the first team in NFL history to never turn the ball over and get 500 yards of offense and still lose the game. Which is tragic. That's that crazy. Is unreal. I mean, awesome. that's a Brown. That's a Cleveland <laughs> stat. <laughs> that is the most Cleveland Browns thing you'll ever hear in your entire life. Mm-hmm. Now, before we get into all of our segments, we get into this week. I'd like to just bring in, you know, a little something, something this week. We are in week six. We're a little past the quarter way of the season. Not quite halfway into the season yet. I want to talk MVP. I want to talk who you guys think is the front. We're doing defensive man or just just league MVP. We're going to go league MVP and let's do that. Let's do league MVP and let's go defensive player of the year. Because I don't think, I don't, like just off rip, I don't think your guys' league MVP is going to be a defensive player. No. Yeah. Yeah, so it never is. It never yeah. is. Yeah. So so we'll do a league MVP and a defensive player of the year. My league MVP this year has to be Kyler Murray. I think Kyler Murray is playing the best football he's ever played. I mean when you're a first overall draft pick, this is what you expect out of your first overall draft pick, right? I mean, you have a first rough season. You go 8-8, eight and eight, and everything's starting to build around you. Now you're finally trying to find your stride. You're 5-0, and oh, and you're showing exactly why you're effective. You're showing why, you know, you can lead this football team, why you can take this team, you know, that hasn't been to the Super Bowl in a long time to that next level, to the promised land. And just to add to this... Is he's one of three passers to have 1,500 passing yards and a 75% completion percentage through five games. And, and the two are Hall of Famers, Peyton Manning, Drew Brees. And he's so damn dynamic, too. He does it all. And he's amazing to watch, man. It's, it's next-level stuff. I can only hope for that for Trevor Lawrence. My defensive player of the year? I mean... For that one, I mean, I'd have to think a little bit harder on that one, but I know, I know he's a rookie, and he's young. But I gotta go. I think Tra- Trayvon's his first name, right? Trayvon Diggs. Yeah, that's like, what I was thinking I'm, about. I gotta go Trayvon Diggs for my defensive player of the year. I mean, I know he's a rookie, but getting six picks and six games. Is that what he's at right now? Six he's got picks? Yep, six interceptions in five weeks. Six picks in five games. I mean, the only person I think that would come close to maybe competing with him in that category maybe is like a Miles Garrett Chandler Jones. I have an oddball name out there for my defensive player of the year. Larry, why don't you go ahead with your MVP and your defensive what? player? Of I, the th- year. I think the defensive player, because we've got to add some names in here. Jerron Hargrave for the freaking Eagles. Dang, is a def- I don't even know who you that don't is. even know who that is exactly. I know who that is. And he he <laughs> he's a defensive tackle. He played. He's he's been around. He's bounced around the league, and he is just an animal this year. He has six sacks, and he's just playing a completely different level of football. I don't know if it's the contract season or what's going on, but the guy is on just eating up plays for him. Mm-hmm. They're losing games, but it's not because of him. So that's just one of those guys. MVP. I probably got to go Herbert. I think Herbert's going to, he's that one, he's a guy, he's starting to finish for me in these games. They're beating people like the Chiefs, the Raiders. You need a, Those are crucial games to win in the division like that. This is a different offense. He's really good, and this is crazy. And I really like Joe Lombardi with it too because if you can have a guy who's going to do stuff that he's done with Alvin Kamara for Eckler, that offense is going to explode. It's too dynamic. There's there's tons of young talent, and the thing is, is you know, it was kind of around, I want to say, 2010, 2009, was really when the NFC started to rise above, and that was the conference for years. I think right now, you're looking at an era where the AFC is going to take over for the next 10 years, and Kyler Murray and the Cardinals have a real, real opportunity to run the NFC for a lot of years. 
Cole, who do you got for your defense player of the year? Anyway? MVP. I'm not going to lie to you. I don't know much about the de- defensive uh, snaps, yeah. and I haven't got to watch a lot of games this year. But my very biased opinion, TJ Watt. I don't still really, tearing up this year, he's huh? He's still tearing up. I mean, he's... And your defense plays different. Like, yeah. when he was hurt the one week, that defense oh, played really... shambles. Just shambles. I mean, completely different. Awful. And then he comes back, and it's back He's to being like leader, the man. top five defense that there always have been. Uh huh. And that's it shows definitely shows absolutely. And then for my MVP, I was gonna say Justin Herbert, but I'm gonna be different. I'm just gonna say Josh Allen. There I said it. I, I said it first. Josh Allen might have gotten lucky. I'll eat crow on that. Whatever. He's playing like a top QB. He's leading his team to. And I love you their know. coaching staff. Oh, like, yeah. Because you got to look at... They absolutely killed the Chiefs. Yeah. I'm not killed, but... Well, and I'm... Horrible. Like, Leslie, Fraz- Leslie mm-hmm. Frazier, he was a former head coach for the Vikings. Mm-hmm. Completely... I mean, it's they're playing their best defense ever. I mean, their least points scored against them. They're number one in the league. And he's facing teams that are super good. And it's just... Mm-hmm. This is week in, week out. They're scoring, like, 17 points. The Bills offense is going to outscore 17 points every week. Yeah, every yeah, yeah absolutely. So, exactly. It's just amazing how the staff's groomed around Allen, and Allen's a stud. Mm-hmm. Okay, Larry, I'm going to rapid fire some teams at you right now. Mm-hmm. And you're going to tell me, is it time for them to panic? Okay. Chiefs. Yes, it's time for I think they're in trouble because they have two teams that are legitimately better than them in that division. I think the Broncos will fall out like normal, but. They are, are they're already behind multiple games, and so that's tough. It's gonna be hard for them to come back. They probably will, but I could see them being a wild card this year. With, that's how with deep how the this, division is. Yeah, that's how it's going. The Washington Football Team. I think they should have been in panic mode already, because Dak's come back. He's an animal. This offense is studly with him. Zeke's looking great. They're four and one. And I don't think Heineke can afford to lose. And their schedule is too hard. Minnesota Vikings. I think it's not time for panic for them. I think they're going to come back, and I think they're going to be a playoff team. This team's too good. They've had a tough schedule all season. They have too good of an offense. And Kirk Cousins is going to ride the wave and get back in the playoffs. I've seen somebody say the other day that they are the best, worst team in the league. Which is fair. They just yeah. had the shittiest luck. Yeah. It's like, and that's why like, I almost feel bad for... Uh, the Lions, Dan Campbell, he yeah. cried oh, yeah. on his press conference this week. Because, I kind of heard it. Like, I know, it, it did hurt. It, it hit, hit me bad because it's like, bro, like this guy wants nothing more to win, and he just keeps getting either screwed by officiating or like just what are you going to do? Like he, he went for two so the Lions could beat the Vikings, and then the defense just let him go. So it's, that's just so tough. And I got two more teams for you. Actually, three more teams for you. New England. New England, they are going to be bad this year. That's just point blank, period. Uh, I think Mac Jones is good, but I think it's that check down offense that's going to happen. They're going to score way too many field goals. I don't think they're that this team this year. Denver. Denver, they're shambles. I, I love I love Teddy Vaughnwater, but this team's now they're going to be with Drew Locke because he might be in concussion protocol. I don't like, I love their offense. They have so many weapons. They shouldn't be this bad with how their defense is set up and how their weapons are. They should be better, but they aren't. Okay, and finally, Seattle. Seattle, I think they're screwed. Just because Russell got hurt, I don't think they'll keep afloat with the quarterback play. Uh, Geno played really good this last week, but I don't see that consistently happening. And I don't, I just think it's, too tough a division to ever come back from that. If they stay afloat and Russell comes back and wins all those games, I'll be mind blown. All right. So now we're going to go to the final segment of the week where we go over teams that impressed us and teams that let us down. Now, it's going to be hard though. It was two weeks ago. I, no, we're going to we're going to go we're this week. Last week. This or, last week. Oh, okay. We're going to go this last week. So, okay. even though we didn't pick the games, We'll, we'll try and stay timely. Oh, I picked them. Yeah, yeah. Even though we're not <laughs> counting them on the records, on the record books, we'll uh, we'll still go with that. A team that impressed me. I don't really necessarily know if it was a team effort that impressed me. 
But I'm going to go with Baltimore. Lamar Jackson, man. We had a whole conversation in the group chat. That solidified his game. I mean, if you weren't sold on Lamar Jackson before, you have to be now. There, There's no way people can come up to you and not say that that man's a top 10 quarterback. It's impossible. There's absolutely no way. You can't. You can't argue that fact. A team that disappointed me, Kansas City, man. I don't I don't care if it's piss and rain, whatever. This is your team that's supposed to compete every year. You're supposed to be the next dynasty. You go out against Buffalo. This is a team that you have to compete against in the AFC to get to the next level, to get to the next round of the playoffs. You're going to have to play them again if you get to the playoffs. You might even have to play them in the first round, second round, if they get a bye. And they just looked absolutely flat. Not impressed. Like Larry said, I think it's time for Kansas City to panic. Larry, who impressed you? Who let you down? Who let me down? I'm going to go with who impressed me first, and that will be none other than the Lions. I love Dan Campbell. I love that man. He's a good guy. He's not, I just think he gets such a bad rap. This is su- He did everything possible. They were down multiple possessions going into the fourth quarter. So to rally your team back, get your team going, get the defensive stops that they got, and then have Goff go down, score a touchdown, and then get a two-point conversion to put him up. I mean, that's all you can do as a coach. I feel bad for him. That's my impress. They're, I'm impressed by the Lions. Who let you down? Who let me down this week? It would have have to have been the kickers in the Green Bay game versus yeah. the Bengals. The Those, the, no, just the kickers from, they missed five consecutive field goals to win the game. Five consecutive. And I just feel bad for Burrow because, I mean, that's such a, that's such a, like, critical win in, like, a young career. That's you a like, dark horse MVP candidate, too. I mean, he'll mm-hmm. never win it. It won't be, like, by the favorites, but he's, had, he's having a good year. He's having a really good year, and I think, like, that would have just solidified something really cool with him, like, winning against Rodgers. Mm-hmm. Like, that's former quarterback that we always have loved to watch that we're now going to have to go to somebody new. Yeah. It's just one of those games. I wish the kicker wouldn't have fucked up. McPherson missed, and then Mason Crosby missed, like, four. So it was just ugly. It was an ugly finish. That I thought it was going to be a tie, because I thought nobody was going to make a field goal. So that was just ugly. Cold who do you got? So for a team that upset me was the Vikings. Even though that they yeah. won, uh, they let the Lions come back, you know, rally back. In Minnesota. It's a fucking stressful... Be, imagine being a diehard Vikings fan. We had one of our buddies over for at Larry's house to watch that game, and I mean... Mm-hmm. And, like, your dad. Like, mm-hmm. I can't even imagine yeah, being a Vikings fan. I feel fan. bad for Kirk Cousins, because he's kind of a dark horse MVP. Yeah. Um, so I'm disappointed with the Vikings, even though they won. And even though the Colts lost, I'm impressed by them. Uh, Carson Wentz did not play good in the first quarter, maybe in the first half, but the second half, he kind of, he kind of did some magic, a lot more than I thought he could, and he kept it close against the Ravens. Put it on. Yeah, even though I picked the Ravens to win, he still did very good against that team. And that was one of those teams that I was going to say, too, that really impressed me was the Colts, because Mm -hmm. they're just, they played fundamentally well. Like, I mean, like... Blocking everything. Like, Mm -hmm. Jonathan Taylor was gashing them the whole time, and it was just blocked well. And you're down, like, they were down Quentin Nelson. He's an Mm all-pro. They are down Ryan Kelly. He's a pro, all-pro. It's like, once you're down all these players, you don't expect the backups to come in and just start mauling. And they did. That's great. They did everything, man. They could have won that game, but obviously not. Alrighty, ladies and gentlemen, it is now time for your favorite time of the week, my favorite time of the week, and your mom's favorite time of the week, the point reveal. Now, like I said, um, Colts did his picks, I did my picks, Larry didn't fill out his picks, we kind of did a little executive decision that we weren't going to count last week, so we didn't do a podcast, so 
you know, it wouldn't have made sense if we, you know, you didn't hear our analysis, we didn't break it down. So we decided not to count that week. So this is from week four. These points are from week four. And we're going to see what Colt is doing here. But So we're going to kick things off with Larry. Larry was in first place last week. Feels good. And he had... Right, or was Cold in first place? I think Cold was in first place. I got 32 and points. Were we tied? We no, were no, tied. you're... How much did you have the week prior? I think it was me and Barn and she might have been tied. Yeah, I think it was you and Barn. Uh, I don't remember. Well, I'm kind of, I have this all messed up. <laughs> Sorry, guys. <laughs> Alright, well Cold, well, Cold figures his stuff out. We're going to go over to Larry for his point reveal. So how much did you have the week prior? So I had 32 points prior. Yeah. And I ended up missing my lock. Ah. Because, you know, I wasn't confident in the Cardinals. So I didn't think we could beat the Rams. There's no way. We don't beat the Rams. The fact that you walked the Rams, though, was ballsy, I think. That's fair. But it was just one of those games after, like, you lose to them so many years in a row, it's just you don't expect to win. So I missed that one. And then I hit my upset of the week. With the Giants. They won in overtime against the Saints because Jameis Winston's garbage, like we all knew. And Saquon Barkley ran it in for a touchdown. And then now his ankle's gone, so yeah. he won't be around for probably the, the rest Giants of the season. The whole Giants team is gone. Exactly. Daniel, Mike Glennon. Danny Dimes was literally... Danny Nichols. He was Rest like he, he was Nichols. on a skating rink without skates. He got downgraded to Danny Pennies. Yeah, he officially oh, got... Danny Pennies. So it'll just be Danny. But anyway, I got 10 points for the week. That's a good week. Which isn't bad. And I'm now at 42 points. So, solid. 42 points for Jackie Robinson. Gold. Okay, so last time we talked, I was at 31 <coughs> points. Uh, week four, I hit my luck, hit my upset. Ooh. Because of our different ruling. Yeah, because mm-hmm. of the records. Mm-hmm. Now we're doing it off Vegas, Vegas odds, odds. Mm-hmm. and now I'm at forty-two points. Forty-two. Points. Oh, I I got eleven points. Eleven points for Fitz. Yes, for Fitz. I told you there's only two scores I want to score. Yeah, two Hall of Famers. Yeah. One, well, two future Larry, Hall of Famers. Larry yeah. Fitz or Drew Brees. And their clocks both ticking. Yeah, mm-hmm. they come close. Well, you know, guys, we put out a poll earlier, or I put out a poll earlier, about how we were coming back, making a return for the picks. You know, we got three votes. Shouts out to our local and uh, far away supporters that voted on the poll. And, uh, you know, Tree was leading the poll on votes on who they think would win. And I think, if anything, that that showed was um, the one person that voted for Colge I think showed that uh, that one person has, or Larry, sorry, one person voted for Larry, not Colt. But uh, I think that one person that voted for Larry, I think that showed that that one person has been watching the picks. I think the two people that voted for Treeb has shown that they're just very loyal subscribers to Treeb Talks. I do appreciate that. But we need some honesty. Yeah, we need. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. If you're not watching the videos, you don't know. Treeb's kind of down in the gutter right now. Um, we missed our lock. Oof. Same, though. And we missed our upset. Ouch. So, we came in, not with a historic low week like Larry had that one week for Carson Palmer with three points. Yeah. Had to do it. But we had an average week. And, you know, I, I've, I've pinned together way too many average weeks to compete against Colge and Larry's um, extravagant weeks. So, I had eight points... And now I am at 33. So I'm a full nine points back. You have to have some good weeks. On Colge and Larry. You might need to hit a tie, too. In week six. Yeah, this is this is where the strategy comes in, I think. For the illustrious three points. A tie. Who knows? A tie's got to be in there somewhere, don't it? Eventually. I mean, seven peak in one week, week 11. I'm going to pick a tie. What about week nine? No. No? Fair enough. 
Alrighty, so now we are here for week six. Picks, locks, and upsets. Kicking things off. Thursday night football. We have the Tampa Bay Buccaneers going up against the Philadelphia Eagles. And before we get into this, uh, Larry Rappaport, would you update the fans on the uh, star, star frame count? Oh, there is 29 star frames so far going into the week. 29 star frames going in to week number six. Through so, four weeks. Yep. Or through four weeks, yeah. Yeah. yeah, four weeks. So now we got the Bucks and the Eagles. Um, you know, one thing I'm willing to eat crow about right now this season is that I thought Jalen Hurts was just complete dog shit. I think he's coming out and proving he's the quarterback of the Philadelphia Eagles. You know, like... What's a good example of this? Tony Romo? Yes! That's a good example. Tony Romo, that's a good example. I'm trying to think of like a modern day example, but I think every, like in the NFL these days, Big Ben. Big Ben's actually a pretty good example, but I mean, he's been to Super Bowls and shit. But modern day Big Ben. Yeah. Modern day Big Ben. Modern day Big Ben's kind of a uh, loosey goosey. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, modern day Big Ben. Because, like, I mean, these days in the NFL, Nobody's going to stick with a quarterback very long until they, you know, take him to their promised land. But I think Jalen Hurts is, you know, the quarterback of the Philadelphia Eagles. I think he keeps his game within two touchdowns, but I don't think they get the job done. It's primetime Brady. It's primetime Bucks. I think Antonio Brown goes off. I think he has a good game. I think he has 130 yards. And by the way, too, I want to say, I don't remember if this was the last picked video we made or if it was the week prior, but the Thursday night game before this, I said Tyler Boyd would go the fuck off. Tyler Boyd went the fuck off. So I have been on with my Thursday night predictions <laughs> with receivers so far. So Antonio Brown, guaranteed to have a day. If he's on your fantasy team. Hashtag start. Cole, who do you got? I like what you said. I think uh, the Eagles can keep this within 14 points. But I I don't think it'll be too close of a game. I got the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Larry, who do you got? I'm going to say it's going to be the Bucks, 34-17. to 17. And the, That's a good score prediction. Mm -hmm. the, the receivers, you know, last week... All three of them, Godwin, Evans, and A.B., had more than 70 yards. All three of them did. They all had more than seven receptions. Two of them had two touchdowns, both Mike Evans and A.B. I just think they're going to do the same shit over and again. So I think I think you're going to run it back. I think Chris Godwin's going to get in, though. I like he's, Chris Godwin. I think he's going to have two touchdowns, and I think ab is going to warm up, get those other ones, and then Mike Evans is going to have that territory, you know, one touchdown. But, you know, Ryan Suckup's going to miss an extra point. Because, you know, it's just the way it goes. Kickers have been kind of crappy this year, so we got to have one missed extra point. I like that. Missed extra point. So the Bucks are going to make that our 30th star frame. $5 charity up. Your choice. Number 30 on the season for, um, I'm gonna give I'm gonna give this shout out to the illustrious, not known, but if you are a fan of Tree Talks and you're this deep, you're gonna know him, Corey Grant. I'm give a shout out to Corey. Special Grant. teams ace. Yeah, special Legend. teams ace. We got a special team ace now, so Jamal Agnew. Yeah, he's a good too. Speaking of the Jags, we got a London kickoff between the Jacksonville Jaguars and the Miami Dolphins. You look at the Vegas odds. My upset of the week is going to be the Jacksonville Jaguars winning their first game of the season. And it's going to be against the Miami Dolphins. What's the spread on that? No, I'm just kidding. Three and a half. <laughs> I, I don't think... I think... Um, we always play good against Jacoby Brissett. That's not a flex. That's like a abnormally weird thing to say. But like... Wembley Stadium's going to be rocking. Jamal Agnew's going to have a kickoff return touchdown. Trevor Lawrence is going to throw one touchdown and a pick. The Jags just need to feed James Robinson, man. And we just we need to be a better coach football team. And if we learn from our mistakes, 
this is a game we should win. There's just like, if there was a time we were going to turn the tide and win one game at least and end our 20-game losing streak, it's going to be this week in, in London against Miami. Cole, what you got? I don't have as much faith as you, you in the Jags. Even if it's in London, Jacoby Brissett is going to have four passing touchdowns. At 6 a.m. Our, our defense is bad, so that's fair. Well, Larry Rappaport might break the news to you. Oh, Tua Tagovailoa might be back. Oh, well, guess what? Tua's going to throw five. Worse. You know what? Bold prediction. <laughs> Tua's worse than Jacoby Brissett. Uh, yeah. I like that bold take. Yeah. I'd have to agree with that. <laughs> yeah. So far, that's kind of fair. Yeah. <laughs> I like Jacoby Brissett. He's going to throw four touchdowns, and I think... Trevor Lawrence is going to throw two picks, one touchdown. Yeah. The Jags really aren't going to have it going on. I just, I just don't think, like, if there's any winnable games left, it's this one or the Jets. Well, you can beat the Jets. Maybe. Yeah, so I'm hoping this is it. Larry, who do you got? I'm taking the Dolphins. Uh, I just think two is probably going to get her done. Uh... The Jags, they're not going to be able to... If I think they're going to try to force-feed Trevor Lawrence, try to make him throw a lot, and I, the secondary is too good for the Dolphins. I think it's going to be probably one or two picks, and that's going to be enough to sink them. They'll lose like a one-possession game. My favorite thing about the Jags this year is that James Robinson is top five in rushing yards. And then you hardly and, use him. And then we hardly use him. I'm like, if we just use that man more, he's in Nick Chubb, Derrick Henry territory. He's in that top three, top two. He's in that race. And That's he has fair. not even half the carries as those That's two That's the backs. same thing with Nick Chubb, too, though. It's like, those, those are those top backs that, like, if they got force-fed like DH, I think they would break See, records. and, like, the thing is with Barnes' argument, because I know, I know, like, Barn, if you're listening, whatever, but like, you know, Nick Chubb's argument with DH and, you know, DH gets force fed, that's why he's above Nick Chubb, blah, blah, blah. The fact of the matter is this the Browns have two running backs that they use, and the two running back split is going to take carries away from Nick Chubb, and that's just the way she goes. And even if that did not happen, Derrick Henry is still the main vocal point of the offense, and even if the Browns are a run-first offense, they are not a run-first offense like how the Titans are. Derrick Henry is the Tennessee Titans offense. He will get it on first down, second down, third down, doesn't matter. Nick Chubb will get the ball on first down, second down, and he'll break off a big run here and there, and then Baker will pass the ball. The Titans don't run their offense like that. They run their offense through Derrick Henry. So it's, it's just it's a different scenario. You can make the argument Nick Chubb is a better running back. I could agree with that. But the reason Derrick Henry has more yards is because he's force-fed. That's just the way it goes. That's the league that it is. Yeah, <laughs> it's just the way it goes. Coming up next, we got the Minnesota Vikings going up against the Carolina Panthers. And Larry, I hate to tell you, but right now you are outnumbered with the Sam Darnold argument. And he is going downhill right he now. He has been going downhill, but guess what? Christian McCaffrey will be back. Christian McCaffrey will be back. I don't care. Kirk Cousins throws four touchdowns. Mm. And you know what? I think that's just... Bold enough to say this is going to be my lock of the week. <clears throat> the Minnesota Vikings will beat the Carolina Panthers in Carolina as my lock. Of the week, Cold Judy got. Fuck Sam Darnold, and uh, I hope Kirk Cousins wins MVP. <laughs> yeah, me too. I, love I would absolutely love that. Uh, Minnesota, I don't really want to talk more about that. The only reason I locked him was just to despite Sam Darnold. There was easier locks on the board, but despite Sam Darnold. Larry, who you got? I'm taking the Panthers. <laughs> Dick. Because <laughs> their secondary is one of the best in the league. They got a great pass rush. I think their team's their defense is good enough to keep them afloat. CMC is going to be back. The offense is going to be ran different. Now Sam Darnold won't have to do everything, and that 
defense is going to have to bite on CMC. I think they're going to win by a one possession game. Minnesota loses heartbreakers, and it's going to be a heartbreaker. Panthers beat them. Fair enough, I can see it. Can see it, but I'm hoping this is one of the one of the games that gets further down the line of me not having to say Sam Darnold's mediocre. Speaking of the Carolina Panthers, too, I just want to touch on this a little bit. Fantasy-wise, and just overall-wise, Robbie Anderson, he's just not getting the ball, man. It's all DJ Moore. I know. He loves him, which is weird. Because he has that past relationship with Robbie Anderson. He does. He used to, at least. I guess it's not as sharp as we thought it was. Yeah. You know, just... If Robbie Anderson came to Pittsburgh, he'd get the ball. Oh, he'd get the ball so much. And the, Well, you might be able to trade for him because you guys need somebody with, a, with Juju being mm. out. You guys might make a move. He's, Who knows? Yeah, he's going to be hurt for the rest well, of the season. And then my, my bold take for, because I forgot to say it, on Thursday, Jer, Jerron Hargrave, two sacks on Mr. Tom Brady. Right. Coming all right, time. Yeah, coming right through the middle. Ryan Jensen's got some trouble on his hands. I like it. Coming up next, we got a game that I think, no offense, Colge, should be flexed to Sunday night. We got the Chargers going up against the Ravens. And, you know, I, I don't this really... This would be a good flex, honestly. Not going to lie. Yeah. I don't want to take the reins on this one, so I'm going to have you take the reins on this one, Cole. Who do you got? I like Justin Herbert in this one. As I said, he's my front runner for MVP. Um, the Ravens, they looked good last week. But I think the Chargers will just be too much. I know Baltimore's hard to play in, but... God, it was such a good game. It, it'll, it'll be the game of the week. Oh, yeah. Herbert... Tony Romo and Jim Nance will be on the call. Oh, I hope so. I bet, bold take, I think Justin Herbert and Lamar Jackson have the exact same passing stats down to the yard. If that happens, you need to buy a lottery ticket. Larry, who do you got? I'm taking the Chargers because the Ravens, they played really good, but that was a shoddy secondary that they played. Against Carson Wentz, yeah, out of everybody. Yeah, it was. They played like fifth and sixth string corners, backup safeties, people that Lamar could easily tear up. But now you got Derwin James. You got legit people. You got people who are just animals. And I don't think they're hurt this year. This is the first time they've ran healthy for a long this long. And I think the Chargers are going to put a statement on them and beat them by twenty. That's a good one. That's a good one. Good bold take there. Now, it's a shame we don't have Barn in the studio because he would, yeah. he would just hate this matchup. Oh, absolutely. Just absolutely disrespectful. I, like I think him. he would pick a tie. Yeah. <laughs> so oh, no. he didn't have I to deal like with the Ravens him. just as much as the, any other person that has a team in the NFC North, but Barnage hates the, Ra the Ravens and, and the, the Chargers. Chargers. Probably the Chargers even more. Yeah. yeah. I mean... And you know what, um, just, you know, just to fade you guys, making up some points, I'm going to take Baltimore. Um, I think this is a game that could go either way than Baltimore, but that's literally the only reason I'm taking Baltimore, to be honest, to fade to play. Hopefully they win, can make up some points. One thing I will say, I think the Chargers will be in the Super Bowl this year. I think it's going to be my uh, my my week six Super Bowl prediction is there's going to be an all L A Super Bowl in L A. SoFi. And all oh, that'll be rigged. And all yeah, that's what I'm saying. It'll be an all it'll be rigged, but it'll be an all L A Super Bowl in L A. with Dr. Dre, Eminem, and Snoop Dogg playing the next episode at halftime. That's my bold prediction. They need to take so many teams out of California. I know. They need to give Idaho that, that, a team. That's a whole different podcast. Though. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they need to give Idaho a team. Absolutely. Yeah. Or at least Montana. Oh, my God. Can you imagine those corn-fed white boys? The so Mountaineers. Have for, uh, <laughs> yeah, the Mountaineers. <laughs> the Montana Mountaineers. People from Idaho, Montana, like Wyoming, Utah. Just Oregon for the athletes. Just scout people from around here. Mm. PNW. That's, that's, That'd be too good. That's a team. Coming up next, we got 
what I'm assuming is going to be one of your guys' lock. That's my bold take here. We got the Rams and the Giants. The Giants are so injured. I think this is a game that, you know, just like any other week, we have a game we don't spend a whole lot of time on. I think this is one of those games. I'm taking the Rams. Stafford throws 360 yards, four touchdowns. Cole, who do you got? <clears throat> Your bold prediction was correct. <laughs> I, I got the Rams with, with my lock. S Stafford throws, how, how many did you say? 360? 360. I, I think 460. 460. One. One. All right, Larry, who you got? I'm taking the Rams. Both the receivers for the Rams are going to have a buck 50. Both of them. Oh, Cooper know. Cup and, and, Rob, and Robert Woods. They're both going to go off. The Giants don't got enough for him. I love me some Mike Lennon. Ah, uh, who doesn't? But you know, <laughs> but he's just, again, yeah. you know, he's just on a for crap, no reason a crapshoot roster again. So, uh, yeah, the Rams are gonna destroy him. It won't be close. So the Rams are gonna bring up our thirty-first Star Friend five dollars charity up. No choice. By the way, also I didn't mention. I forgot to mention the Bucks. Again, on Thursday night. Fifth straight Thursday what? night game. With the star frame. With the star frame. Crazy. And also the Rams only uh, second star frame of the week. And next up we got the Colts and the Texans. And you know, you guys are all sold on the Colts. And honestly, I get it. Especially in this game. I'm taking the Colts. Like, I'll say that right now. Like, I'll circle it already. But I, I still think this is a bad team. I don't think I think that uh, I think the Titans win this division, and I think the Titans win this division legitimately with six or seven wins. On God. Yeah, I'm serious. You look at the Titans' schedule too. I've looked at the Titans' schedule too. You look at the Titans' schedule. There's legitimately six, seven winnable games. And they have the most talent over the Colts. Well, yeah. But here's my thing. is The Colts are all well. It's just like we talked about. It's like, yes, they've already been hurt. Yes, they might not be as good of a roster. But when you're coached as that good. Like, they have backup guards just eating people alive against the Ravens. That's Clayus Campbell. Clayus Campbell had a block. Yeah, he did because he's an animal. But that was special teams. But that's special teams. That's yeah. what I'm talking about. But when the when the run game happens, mm -hmm. what happened? They got ate up all night long, and it's backup linemen. That's what I'm saying, though. I don't think the Colts are going to make a comeback to win the division. I just think that there is four complete winnable games out of the division. If you if you you're facing the Texans twice, you should win both of those. But the Titans are also playing the Texans twice. Well, and they're already and yeah. two games up. That's what I'm saying. But I'm saying if the Colts have a chance for playoffs, it's doable because the division's easy. I mean, they have four games that they on schedule that they already have. You can maybe mark up as a win. Yeah, and then, but you got to think, too, they're two games back right yeah. now, and they got four winnable games, but the Titans also have four winnable games yeah. on their schedule exactly. with a two-game advantage. Yeah. I just think there's pieces to the puzzle that are coming back. T.Y. is coming back. I like the Colts. I'm locking the Colts against the Texans. Fair. I think they'll blow out the Texans. I don't think it's going to be close. I like Michael Pittman. T.Y. is going to be back. I think their offense is dynamic, and I think they have – I don't think it matters. I mean, Quentin Nelson's been gone, and they've been doing fine without him. So I like that running back field. The receivers are dynamic. This team's got a chance just because of how easy the division is. Davis Mills, you know, he's not like a Nathan Peterman interception machine, granted. But Dish? he's the worst starting NFL quarterback ever. They should have they should have won last week against Mac Jones. They were up twenty two to nine and they lost because of special teams. He's so bad. The special teams, their punter punted a kick off their lineman's back of his head because he didn't line up far enough back when he kicked it. There's a They're bunch so of special... badly coached. Yeah, too. it was so bad. Their head coach is awful. What's yeah. his name? David Coley or something. Yeah, he's bad. Mm -hmm. He's going to get fired. 
Mm-hmm. Cold tree guy. I like the Colts. I never said I was high on the Colts. I said I was surprised by their performance last week. Just to point that out. Yeah. But the Texans are in shambles. They, they don't need to start worrying because they're already bad. Well, yeah. There's there's no reason to worry because they're not going to go anywhere. Yeah, I agree. All right, that's going to bring our thirty second star frame. Five dollars charity of your choice. Shouts out to Maurice Jones Drew <laughs> and the Honey Badger. <laughs> Coming up next, we got the Kansas City Chiefs visiting the Washington football team. Now, I am going to give you three reasons why the Washington football team is going to win this game. Antonio Gibson, the Kansas City Chiefs have the 29th ranked rushing offense, rushing defense, sorry. Antonio Gibson is a top 10 running back. And I love, love what he has to offer. I think he goes over 100 yards, 120 yards, two touchdowns. Taylor Heineke is a starting NFL quarterback. I said what I said. I think that this is his job to lose. He has a whole 2021 NFL campaign to prove why he belongs in this league. And this game right here is his coming out party. He is going to get into an absolute shootout with Patrick Mahomes. Their defense has talent. They just have to fucking want it. They have to play to their potential. They have a pass rush. They have a secondary. They have it. They have it. They have it. I believe in this team. I believe in Taylor Heineke. I believe in the targets they have too. Curtis Samuel's back. They got freaking Terry McLaurin. They got Logan Thomas. They have targets. Taylor Heineke, he's conservative. He can throw the ball down the field. And I think this game comes down to the wire, an overtime game. Another one? Another one. Ben Antonio Gibson, on the third play from overtime, is going to run it 47 yards to the house for the win. And just like Larry said earlier in the beginning, it is officially time for the Kansas City Chiefs to start panicking. Because Washington is on a tear. Cold you up. I got Washington for my upset. <laughs> and I didn't even choose them as my upset. Like, originally, I just went and circled my games. Yeah. And I like them. I think, yeah, Patrick Mahomes, he's probably going to throw three picks. And I think it might be a blowout, honestly. Mm. I think, like, they're going to be up. And, like, Patrick Mahomes just might have to sit out for the last five minutes. Chad Henney's going to have to come in. Chad Henney. Ooh. Chad Henney might have a throwing touchdown. Yeah, Kuru Hall. Dude, Blaine Gabbert got some playing time last week, too. Shouts out to our boy. He scored a touchdown. Yeah, shouts out to the superstar Blaine Gabbert. I like to hear... Taron. Mm-hmm. Taron's take on Blaine mm. Gabbert. <laughs> superstar. Me and Taron are big Blaine Gabbert fans. Shouts out to Taron. But, yeah. I'm, I, dude, okay, so... 6.5 spread, just so you know. Yeah. <laughs> nice. <laughs> before, I, before we get to Larry, too, I also want to just say, before we get into this... I got into a really like long Twitter thing the other day about how I just think the Jacksonville Jaguars are not even good enough to be an NFL franchise anymore. I think like top to bottom they just ran so inefficiently. And I brought up a question. Tree, if you weren't a Jags fan, who would you root for? Bengals. I'd be a Washington football team fan. I love Antonio Gibson. I love Terry McLaurin. I love Riverboat Ron like Chase Young, and I think Taylor Heineke. You know, I've always had a thing. I've always had a thing for these under-the-radar quarterbacks that could be something. I think Taylor Heineke has that. So I'd Washington's say, always produced them, too. Yeah. Because that's where Kirk Cousins came from. Mm-hmm. I think I think Washington I think Washington would be that team for me. I think they're my official, like, second favorite team. So, if you were wondering. Larry, who do you got? I'm taking the Chiefs. Fair. Uh, fair. Yeah, I like Taylor Heineke. I just don't think it's... I'm not that high on him. It's I crazy think. that that was the minority, too. Though. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I'm just not that high on him because, I mean, he's had some good games and he's had some bad games. And I feel like if you're going to take that next step, you're trying to avoid costly mistakes and easy... Like, he sometimes forces the ball into turnovers. 
because he likes to take shots. Mm -hmm. So, I don't know. I think the Chiefs are going to get it done. I think it's just obviously Mahomes and them are struggling, but this is one of those games that they need to have the bounce back, and I think they're going to have it. Fair enough. They need that bounce back week, but I think Washington's a tough team. You know, Kansas City had a tough schedule coming into this year. Coming up next, NFC North battle. And, dude, I'm so fucking irritated about this. Justin Fields is ass. I don't even care. Oh, well, he keeps getting lucky. He's playing like shit. Dude, he literally, okay, fucking Brady Geidel. If you're fucking watching this, I'll shout out your first and last name. If I knew your address, I would also put it fucking out there. You piss me off. Fucking <laughs> hits me up and fucking tells me, like, fucking Justin Fields is this, Trevor Lawrence is this. And I'm like, dude, if Trevor Lawrence was on the Chicago Bears, he, the Bears would be undefeated. <laughs> The Bears would be winning, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. yeah. definitely be winning. Yeah, and if Justin Fields is on the Jags, we would fucking be getting the exact thing. Yeah, like be way worse, worse. way yeah. worse. It'd be less points. Yeah, way less sure. points. Yeah, no, it'd be fucking awful. Have you <laughs> seen? Have you seen this man play? I think there's fucking. Two. He puts so much effort into every throw he makes. He fucking has to put 100% effort into a six-yard curl route. Like, literally, cocked back, throws, and it looks like he's going to throw an absolute piss missile 40 yards down the fucking field to Allen Robinson, but no, it's a fucking six-yard curl to your boy, and he's not even getting catches. It's an absolute disgrace, too, what the Chicago Bears are doing to Allen Robinson's career. Fucking that man is getting completely underused, and he got underused from the Jags in the past, and the Bears in the past. I want him to go to the Jags after this, but I think he should go to a contender, go somewhere where he has a chance he's to get used. He's always been a thousand-yard guy. And yeah. This year he's just getting shit on. Well, when you because have a, of that offense is so bad. When you have a quarterback that can't even throw the ball six yards without having to cock it back half a fucking, just fucking literally, like it hurts my shoulder seeing it how bad he has to cock that shit back. Justin Fields, worst fucking quarterback I've ever seen. I'm taking the Green Bay Packers over the Chicago Bears by a fucking mile. Cold shit you got. I like Green Bay. Bryce? <laughs> I hate Justin Fields. <laughs> Dreeb, Dreeb also brings this out of me, too. I, I won't lie, dude. Dreeb, Dreeb, yeah, I'll do that to you. Yeah, I don't know. I The Bears are they're bad. I mean, they've kind of been bad, and Fields is... I feel like there's two quarterbacks that are running quarterbacks. They're guys that are, are they're RBs. They're RB1s before they're QB1s. And he's not even that good of a runner. No, he's not, but I feel like Fields is more of a runner, and I feel like Trey Lance is also a runner. And I think that's not by his fault. I think that's because Kyle Shanahan's going to game plan him into just dog crap. Yeah. Think you can't be having your quarterback run 13 times, but I think the Packers are just going to eat him alive. Devontae Adams had 206 yards last oh week off 11 God. catches. If they're already rolling that up, and he's got Randall Cobb back rolling up hot. Randall, Drew Hall of Famer. Yeah. Randall Cobb tore the Steelers up. That's what I'm saying. We locked Devontae up because we double teamed him, but Randall, Randall Cobb. Cobb. Gave it to us. Exactly. It and that's what the Packers' offenses have been missing. They mm -hmm. haven't had that another guy that's actually going to catch the ball and keep up with Rodgers. Because those guys, like Marquez, Valdez, Gantling, those guys have been struggling. Uh, Alan Lazard, struggling for years. I think this is finally the offense that's breaking Rodgers through it. I like it. I think Mercedes Lewis needs to start Dude, stealing he was reps. Dude, a dog last week. Yep, he needs to start stealing reps from Tanya because Tanya's just not getting it done, and I think Mercedes can still get it done. Oh, he's a 19-year vet. I mean, he's the dog. So he's I think the, the Packers beat him by a lot. And that'll be our 33rd Star Frame, my little journey of your toys. I got you to the lead on that. That was awesome. So, what it, so, yeah, 2005. How many years is that from now, Larry? 2005? Yeah. That's 15 years ago. Oh, so yeah, I was way off. 15 year bet. Mercedes Lewis. But still, yeah. he's 39. Is, is he? Crazy. Yeah. Man, mm -hmm. he's old. He's a goat. Though. He's a goat. Love him. Alright, coming up next. Man, this game is 
This game's tough for me. Hard for me to choose. This game's tough. And, it hurts know, my soul to pick against Dan Campbell after seeing <laughs> that press conference. Honestly, yeah, I'm gonna have yeah, one of you. You're actually, yeah, you're right. I'm gonna have one of you boys take the lead. I got the Cincinnati Bengals going up against the Detroit Lions. Larry Evans started off a game this week, so I'm gonna have you start off. Who do you got? All right. Mm. Dan Campbell deserves a win. Oh, absolutely. And I think the Lions are a really good team. I think they've played really good against playoff teams this season. So that shows the level of competitiveness he's bringing to his team. To be able to hang with those teams is something. Mm -hmm. I mean, if you're a dumpster fire team, you're not hanging. No. So that shows that there's some fire there. But I love the Bengals, too. The offense has been absolutely wonderful. Jamar Chase has had five receiving touchdowns in five weeks with that team. They're just a good team, too. Joe Mixon's always doing good. Joe Burrow's a dark horse MVP this season Yeah. for that division. But I think I'm going with Dan Campbell. There's too much energy. There's too much fire. Seeing that from your head coach, there's nothing more that you want than to win. And I think Jared Goff delivers, finally. I think he gives him mm -hmm. that win. I think Goff throws four touchdowns. I think he's going to hook up with Hawkinson twice. I think Swift will get a receiving touchdown. And I think he's going to go to one of those no-name receivers that we don't know about. Like Amon St. Brown is going to get a TD. <laughs> don't know who that is. Exactly. <laughs> so there you go. I think the Lions get it done. Yeah, I like the Lions too after you gave me that uh, speech right when we first started. Uh, Dana Campbell... I don't think I've ever seen a head coach cry in a press conference. I don't think I've ever seen that ever. I've never seen that. I've never seen that emotion and that, that fire that, to yeah. want to win. Like, he was absolutely, like, heartbroken from that. Mm -hmm. And I think he's going to coach his team. I like, I don't know if I like Jared Goff or not. Some weeks I like him, some weeks I don't. He's one of those guys that I have mad respect for. Man, I've I hated him. I don't even I, know if I have mad respect for well, him. It's, it's, it's he's a, playing like his jersey's worth seventy nine ninety nine. Uh, yeah, it is. He wants it to be one forty. It's from <laughs> it's from my division perspective. I love yeah. people that have been from my division just because mm -hmm. I played them. I've seen how they can work, and I think that Goff's a real team builder. I mean, he did everything he was supposed to. He beat the Vikings. I he had the lead. I talked to a guy at work today who has been a Rams fan since the 1960s. And he said, I think the most real thing about Jared Goff, he just doesn't have flash. Oh, he doesn't have the it factor. Absolutely. He doesn't have, to, he doesn't have it. That's the thing about Jared Goff. Mm. And I like that's that. tough. I like that statement. I mean, he's got to the Super Bowl. I but, think he, but he didn't win. He doesn't he, have it. He has. Well, he yeah, but that's because you get out coached. I that's mean, what I'm saying, dude. Like, quarterbacks that have it will do work. something in that yeah, game. You know, yeah. coaches I mean, that, that have sense. it will take that quarterback to the Super Bowl. Like Sean McVay. Like Sean well, McVay. Well, he should have. Sean McVay has, has it. Yeah, Sean McVay is a coach. So, uh, so you both took Detroit? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I'm going to take Cincy. I think... I think Joe Burrow gets it done. I do like the Bengals, though, honestly. I mean, what's the AFC North looking like right now? Cleveland's in first place, I'm guessing. No. Baltimore. Baltimore's 4-1. Cleveland's 3-2. and two. We don't need to talk about the Steelers. Steelers are 2-3. And, <laughs> and the Bengals are 3-2. and two. Yeah, so... Yeah. The Steelers aren't looking horrible. No. <laughs> They're just... In Dude, you know, and it's, it just sucks. It sucks for the Steelers bad because they're in a situation right now where they just, they're not in a good position to get another good quarterback. Mm -mm. Unless nope. they trade. I think the best thing they could do for the future of their franchise is trade for Deshaun Watson. Deshaun Watson will never play another snap in the NFL. I think you will. I think it would be wasted. Picks if you did it, mm -hmm. and I think I that's the way that it has. That, I feel like that's why it hasn't happened. Well, I think it'll happen by this time next year. I think next year he will play again. I think this year was just a year. You know, he's getting all of his shit figured out. Blah blah blah. Once he gets his shit figured out, case closed during the off season next year. Come around free agency time, and the Texans are taking phone calls. I think the Steelers would be... Deshaun Watson's a worse rapist than Big Ben. I don't think so. 
Okay. I don't know. There's a lot of counts. There's one woman for Big Ben. <laughs> there I know, was like I know. 20 of them. I, 20 well, plus for Deshaun. Deshaun I hate, will never play in the league again. He's, I, I hate he's, to say it, but dude, the NFL's like that, though. I think he's, Yeah, it I is. Think, I, I think a whole I, bunch of memes like it. I think, I think he's going to be able to find his way out of it, just because he's, he's a kid that can ball. And I hope it's not for the Steelers. I don't. I don't want him on my team. I hate it, but the Steelers are a shitty enough franchise like that that I think that they would, they would take the gamble and they would be a good, they would be a think, better team for it. I don't think for Deshaun Watson. Never be too much given up. Mm-hmm. It's but, not uh, worth it. But I think there's going to be a team that has to do it, and I think Mike Tomlin didn't take on Colin Kaepernick. Well, because Kaepernick and Deshaun are two completely different stories. I don't know. I feel like Kaepernick revolutionized the fucking the. The They're running kind style of quarterback. Kind of similar. I know, but I mean, like... Like, he I don't brought know. that to you the look, game. You look... Okay, so... If Other Deshaun, than Vic, If but... Deshaun has an opportunity to play, right? If, say that, like, for some reason, all this shit gets thrown out, yeah. cleared out. He's he fine. pays enough. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Quiet. Exactly. That. <laughs> you wouldn't want the Steelers to trade for Deshaun Watson. No. Oh, dude, you'd be crazy. I don't think so, no. I'm, you, dude, the AFC North would have Joe Burrow, fucking Lamar Jackson, Deshaun Watson. I'm not saying Big Ben's a better option. I know, but he's out of the league after this year. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I this is that. the renaissance. Story. But, like, the it's, thing it's, is... It's done after this. The thing is, is, like, what are you going to do? I'm, I'm, I'm ready for a couple bad years with a couple bad quarterbacks. No, you're not. We've been uh, there. Mentally, <laughs> yeah. we've been there. Men- yeah. not ready for that. Mentally, I'm not ready for yeah. that. Physically, yes, I'm ready for that. Fair enough. All right, so Larry, just a little stat update. How many star frames we got total here? We have four so far. Four total throughout the season. So we got 33. 33 for uh, yeah, Greg Jones, our that's legendary nice. fullback. Yeah, that's a classic. Putting some respect on the fullbacks. When you think of 33, Cole, did anybody come to your mind? No. No? Absolutely not. Yeah. <laughs> Actually. Yeah, nobody off cuff. All right, coming up next, we got another game. That is just fucking hard for me. And it shouldn't be hard because the Cardinals are undefeated. But the Browns, man, they're just one of those teams. A Chargers game was a tough one. Larry, you you can never convince me one way or the other. You always pick against your squad, but tell me a little bit about it. Who do you got? I'm picking for the first ever in group picks a tie. Oh. I think the Cardinals and the Browns fucking tie. I think we are hurt right now, and I think that's why we don't push it to a dub. I think we are hurt a little bit. We have some starters that are not going to play. We have Who's Chan- not Chandler Jones got COVID on Tuesday. He will not play. Rodney Hudson, our center, who we just traded for from the Raiders, out with a rib injury. He's not playing. How, how recently did you trade for him? Just this season. Oh, this season. Okay, so it yeah. wasn't like it was, and he And he just got hurt last week. Okay. And so he's going to be out. So I just think injuries-wise, we're going to be playing a little bit injured. I think the Browns' run game is going to be running hot, but I think it's going to be a special team as well. I don't think it's going to be. We're. I don't think we'll miss, but I think the Browns are going to miss to to make it be a tie. You guys tend to be pretty good against the run, though, don't you? I mean, we did good against DH, but other than DH, we let James Robinson have. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> eight yards per carry. We let Dalvin Cook have eight yards per carry. We let. It's crazy though. DH has those games like last year. DH only barely scraped seventy yards against Pittsburgh defense. We gave him fifty-eight off seventeen carries. Yeah, exactly. Which is nothing. Another DH thing. DH has games like that. James Robinson averages eight yards a carry. Which is that's what I mean. That's what we gave him. I mean. That's every... fucking nuts. And we still never give him the ball. And when you have both Kareem And then you're still giving Carlos Hyde the ball. When you have Kareem Hunt and Nick Chubb, they, because what they've done all season, and I've watched every Browns game, what they've done all year is keep one man 
totally rejuvenated for the fourth quarter. Totally ready to go. One guy's getting carries the whole game. The other guy's just sitting there waiting until the fourth quarter while everybody else is tired of shit. And then they're gassing them. And it's, I mean, it's easy for the Browns. And I think that's what's going to happen. I think Kareem Hunt and both of them get 100 yachts. So, and I forgot to. Did we, did we subtract points for a missed tie, or we just... I, I, we would have to go look. Yeah, we'd have to go look at the It might down. be one or two. One, I think the points at was two. I think three I re- points. Three, three points for a make. Correct. And and I think it was negative one. One or two. Or I'll, negative I'll two. Yeah, because we're, we're gambling mm-hmm. for it. Okay, uh, I'll go next. I think Baker implodes this game. I think the run game works, but I think Baker drops back to pass. And two players that I really, really like for the Cardinals, and I think they showed up a lot in the last game, Isaiah Simmons. Yeah. I like him a lot. I think he gets pick six. And Buda Baker. Buda got a pick last week against Trey Lance. Yep. And on top of that, too, is somebody who's playing really good, just doesn't get sacks, J.J. I mean, J.J., fourth quarter, or fourth fourth down, put his hand up and batted that bitch right out of the sky. I mean, that's stuff that you can't, that's not teachable, really. People got to have that game mechanics. And you talk about somebody that, else so. on the defensive line that I didn't even know was on the Cardinals' defensive line is Zach Allen. Mm-hmm. That motherfucker got after it last week. And he's always had a high motor. He's just been a guy that's played hurt, and I think finally having all the rotational pieces that we do. It, it opens it up a lot. I think another guy people sleep on, Dennis Gardecki. Oh, yeah. He's, the, he's, he's a big guy, too, a big piece. Uh, he only had 76 pass rush attempts last season, got seven sacks. And he's, he's one of those guys that's been a big special teams ace for us. He's going to step up because Chandler will be out of the game. Yeah. And I think he's got some chances to maybe have a breakout game. Yeah. I think, I think what it's going to come down to, is that I just don't think Cleveland's going to... I don't think... Okay, not Cleveland as a whole, but I don't think Baker, when it comes down to when he has to drop back to pass, is going to be able to compete against Arizona's defense. I think the Cardinals... And I know I had to like listen to Larry talk about it for a little bit, but I've like kind of built my analysis off of it. I think the Cardinals are going to blow the Browns out. I think it's going to be 34... 17, Arizona with the win. They're hot, man. They're hot. They're riding that wave. I got them. Cold shoot you got. I got the Arizona Cardinals. Uh, Baker's a little bit hurt. Um, Odell, he quote-unquote's been hurt since college. He sucks. Whatever, you know, he sucks. He literally has held back that offense. Last yeah. week, it was his fault. Yeah, and it's going to be his fault this week again. I think it's gonna He's going to have one of those tip picks. I think it's going to be a 17-point game, and I like uh, Arizona. He literally has, like, no care. That's something I've noticed with Odell this season. It's like, mm-hmm. there's no care in him. Like, if he drops it, he's like, I don't give a fuck. Mm-hmm. Like, I'm good. It's like, you have to... Give a shit about your team. Like there's You're a affecting your, there's give there's a, shit a about yourself. Yeah, even. yeah. There's a there's a point where like Odell was like a top ten receiver in the league, but the fact that like Hollywood Higgins is better than you. Oh, there was a point where like he was the receiver. In yeah. the league. the motherfucker. Yeah, yeah, the top guy. Don't talk about anybody else. Mm-hmm. We're the top guy. Coming up next, guys, we got the Dallas Cowboys. Going up against the New England Patriots in Gillette. Larry, let me tell you this. If I didn't want the Jags to beat Miami really bad and end our drought, right? This would have been my upset of the week. I got the New England Patriots defeating the Dallas Cowboys. I'll tell you why. And you talked about it. You talked about it earlier about, you know, I asked you, should New England start panicking? And he said, Mac Jones, you know, they're going to kick a lot of field goals. They're going to do this. They're going to do that. I think that's why New England's going to beat Dallas. I think they're just going to control the time of possession. I think Bill Belichick needed these four, five, six games to really grasp what he has with Mac Jones and really grasp what this offense is, 
with Mac Jones, and I think he understands. Look, in order to win with this guy, I really just need to control the time of possession. And he really needs to control the time of possession against Dallas. Well, and you could talk about that too. Is like we the Patriots against the Bucks. Yeah, that was one of those games. Like you're saying, is they he he's trying to control the cro- clock, make sure that they're in the plus situation so they can win those twenty to seventeen games. Those really close, low scoring games that Mac Jones doesn't need to go out and, and score touchdowns all the time because they're just kicking field goals, maybe one touchdown here or there. But, yeah, that's exactly what you talked about. They are getting good at doing that possession thing. If Nick Folk doesn't miss, they'd beat Tom Brady. Yep. So. I'm taking I'm taking New England this one. Cole, who do you got? Uh, I like Dallas. Uh, Dallas. I love Dallas over Dallas, uh, I like Dak this year. They're going to be a top team in the NFC. They're going to be in the NFC Championship. Ooh. Um... Pat, I don't know if I really like Mac Jones that much. He just he it, it. I I don't know yet. I'm not gonna say he's garbage or good or average or whatever. I hate to say it for a, like being a Jags fan and having T Law on my team, but I think he's the best rookie quarterback this year. Yeah, I mean, I I I don't know if I like him really, honestly. Um, you gotta give Trey Lance a couple more weeks. I don't I, like <laughs> no, as far as as far as throws go. None of the rookie quarterbacks are making throws that Trevor Lawrence is making. Yeah, I don't. Know. I don't like the Pats this week. Uh, I like the Cowboys. I think the Cowboys. They might put it on the Pats. Honestly, forty run, forty burger, fifty burger, thirty-seven, thirty-seven burger, thirty-seven to. Uh, 13. Going back to the, the rookie quarterbacks, right? So, Brady Geidel, if you want to go and figure out what his address is. <laughs> um, he freaking was talking to me about Justin Fields or whatever. I think the two best rookie quarterbacks in the league are Trevor Lawrence and Mac Jones. Why? Trey Lance is one-dimensional. He runs a lot. He, him he wasn't and, the starter, though. I know, but I've seen like with his game against Arizona, and I think just how he's going to be for the rest of the year. They do a lot of design runs for Trey Lance. And when you have a quarterback, unless you're Lamar Jackson, and you do a lot of design runs for him and they don't work out, that means you're hiding a weakness. And as a quarterback, if your weakness is throwing the ball, that's a problem. Mac Jones completes a lot of passes. And he's he checked down ball, city, man. And he gets the ball out quick. Trevor Lawrence, if he just fucking could be in the lead and win some games, man, he he's makes the, he's, these throws that are just immaculate. Like like you know, you know, like I don't know, like having a quarterback like Kyler Murray, having a quarterback like Big Ben, right? There's there's times where they just let these passes go and you just know they're going to be completed. You just know that they're just beautiful like throws, right? Mm-hmm. I finally have that with Trevor Lawrence. I've never had that being a Jags fan. I was going to say he's like the ultimate like Bruce Arians quarterback this yeah. season for me. Like I think he's just going out there gunslinging. Yeah. Like Risk it for the biscuit. I don't give a damn. We're bad. We're, you know, we're not there yet as a team. I know this team's not a playoff squad, so let me just throw my fucking arm out. Yeah. Because might as well, you know? Yeah. I think that's what his kind of... We haven't talked about Urban Meyer, have we? Yeah, we haven't He's an about... animal. Do we need to talk about him? He's a guy. <laughs> what a guy. I mean, is, to that, be a hundred... is, is that something to bring up? I think. I think if we had to bring it up... If I had to say some things about it, I think the media. I think I think it's something to talk about, right? It's funny. It's cool. It's whatever. funny. Whatever. I don't think it's much more than funny, though. I think the bigger storyline of that is that he didn't go on the plane ride home with his team. I think that's the big storyline. The fact that somebody caught him on cam with somebody at a bar. It's in like Cincinnati. Yeah, that kind of shows that he's not all in. Who fucking cares? Who fucking cares about that? Dude, it's fucking... The Jags aren't playing. 
They're, they don't have practice. True. Fucking who gives a this shit? This is off, Dan. Yeah, he's just, he's, and he fucking, he's from Ohio. Yeah. He's at home. Might the, as well. The Let big, the big point of view from that is that he didn't make the plane ride home with his yeah. team. And all the players said the same thing. Right. I think the media is trying their fucking, and I hate to say it, because we're, we're about, did everybody get their picks in for this game? No. Okay, who do you got in this one? I'm taking the Cowboys. I'm taking them by a lot. I think CeeDee Lamb, they're just too good of an offense. I think Dalton Schultz is going to get on the board twice. Zeke's going to run a hat trick. And I think the Patriots get blown out because it's Mac Jones' check down city. He's going to get field goals, but you can't win against the Cowboys with field goals because the Cowboys are just too good of an offense. They're, I mean, Dax, that's another guy. MVP run, Dak. Comeback player of the year has got to be Dak. Alright, and the reason I wanted to wait for you to get that pick in is because the, the game coming up next, we have the Raiders and the Broncos. Now, the thing that pisses me off the most is that people are comparing Urban Meyer to John Gruden. It's not, okay, two things. One, it's not even close to the same fucking thing. And Urban Meyer, right, I think he, you haven't even given him a fucking chance yet. He still has an opportunity to build a team, to try it out, whatever. I think two things that it comes down to the Jacksonville Jaguars. It comes down to ownership. Shad Khan fucking sucks. He's the worst owner in the league. Fucking, we have a terrible offensive and defensive coordinator. He doesn't know how to hire for shit. I think Urban Meyer has a chance to turn this team around. But the problem is is you can't keep having these top 10 picks and you can't keep having the most money in the fucking league and not equating it to anything. That's a big problem with the Jags. Now with the Raiders, I mean, I don't want to get, like, super... And John Gruden? Yeah, John Gruden. I don't want to get, like, super political or whatever, but, We've missed like... too many weeks. Huh? We miss. One week, and it's just been... Yeah, it's been crazy. Yeah, crazy. I, I, he resigned as the Raiders head coach, and I mean, who's taking over? The special, special teams, teams guy. He was... Wasn't Gus Bradley? No. Damn. He's the D, D, D coordinator. He needs to be the coordinator. It's a special teams guy. Mm-hmm. But, um, I don't know. I just... Gruden... Personally, it's like, dude, fucking who the fuck got into his emails? Well, fair, but it also, too, is, like, you almost got to expect that. If you're that big of a piece in that big of a mm-hmm. league or that big of something, you have to clean your shit up. If you're going to, I mean. He probably didn't think about it because he retired or Well, yeah, whatever. yeah, he's been, he gone, he's been gone. He's been gone for forever, but still, you know what I mean. Mm-hmm. And, like, what, oh, yeah. when and, you're and that a, big oh, of an influential piece in the world itself, you mm-hmm. need to clean your shit up or not. I mean, because even if it was 10 years ago, t- today's society is not going to allow for that shit to happen. And that's the what happened. You got to hire re- whoever. He resigned. Hired, man. And what, so like, did he just say like the Michelin tire statement? No, it was not just that. Okay. There was so There's, I didn't, I didn't do any digging. Very anti women anti uh, I mean you look at that mother you, you look at that motherfucker and you look at the Raiders GM they the just racist. They, yeah you just they oh, just, yeah. they just sure. look like fuckers that are like that you that know? like to and yeah I think it got so pushed that he got resigned too is that they just had a guy on the team yeah, Nassib like, you know, yeah it kind of plays in part with it, you know. Like obviously, the GM's not gonna it let sucks, him. Sucks, man. Like I mean, it's like I don't know. There it sucks a... for the Raiders because they were on a good roll, and I really thought John Gruden was kind of getting it going. Yeah, finally. but and it's just like, who the fuck just? That's what I want to know is who the fuck just had his emails and leaked his emails. That's exactly. what I'm saying. There's going to be more. Yeah. People who he sent the emails to and 
Honestly, there's probably more. Well, that was that at the same emails. Well, also, you got to think that's at the same. That guy who's the Washington GM, he's already been kicked out of the league. Mm-hmm. That guy got kicked out of the league a long time ago. So gonna be more it's the same sort of situation, and you got to say, I mean, Jay Gruden, who's John Gruden's brother, was probably the head coach at the time. Yeah. So now the whole family's probably going to get. Mm-hmm. Because who knows? I don't know what Jay Gruden's doing, but he might be a coordinator somewhere. He probably hates gay people, too. Yeah. Dude, I mean, it's like, <laughs> dude, it's, it's just so bad. It's 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 like, it's like, it's one point, like, where, you know, you say one thing, and it's like, I don't like kissing dudes. And then it's one thing where you're like, you yeah, fucking go I off. I hate gay people or yeah. whatever. And that's like, dude, fuck. If you ever met a cool gay dude, they'll fucking change your life. Mm-hmm. <laughs> dude, fucking goddamn. I'm pretty... Carl Nassib's pretty cool. Dude, fuck. Two of my favorite co-workers are gay and a lesbian. Fucking <laughs> best people I've ever met in my life. But anyway, the Raiders are going to get shit kicked by the Broncos, aren't they? Actually, with Drew Locke, fuck, probably not. Actually, I'm gonna yeah, t- fuck. I don't know. Is it cold? Just tell me. Is it? Is um, this? Is so this enough? Last time I remember a head coach either getting fired or resigning was the Rams uh, and their special teams coaches uh, came in to be the interim head coach. Yeah. What's that Rams special coaches team name? Oh, his name, uh, Bones or they call him Bones or something like that. God, I don't know who you're talking about. Maybe Jones. I don't know if it's Bones Jones. But uh, Bones. last time I remember that happening, the Rams kind of fucking shit kicked somebody. Dude, I mean the Rams are. I mean the Raiders are a good team, but the yeah. I mean, so Drew, if I it's Drew Locke, I kind of got the Raiders in this one. Yeah. I think uh, Carl Nassib, three and a half sacks. He's just gonna go fucking. He's gonna go off, <laughs> you know. Um, I, I don't really know about the rest of the team. I really don't know how they're gonna handle it. You're like, I don't know about the straight guys on the team, but I definitely know about <laughs> Carl. <laughs> Uh, I got the Raiders. Like, I don't know about the other 52 guys on the roster. Larry, who do you got? Uh, I hate Drew Locke. I do too. If it was Teddy Bongwater, I'd say the Broncos would win this all day. (laughs) And I'd have him as my upset of the week here. But, it's not. So I think the Raiders are too talented, no matter the coaching problems, to allow them to lose to the Broncos this season. And I think the Raiders get it done. Derek Vehicle, roll tight and through him. I love I th- Derek Vehicle. I think we're talking about 120 yards and two touchdowns to Waller. And probably a bomber, at least an 80 yarder, two rugs. You know, you guys can well, about Red Bro. No, Ruggs is the, the deep threat. We can't we can't we can't we can't let a we can't let a white receiver dominate in this game. I love Renfro though. I, but not in this he game. Tore, not in this game, dude. Not after Pittsburgh up. Not after what John Gruden did. We can't let a white receiver tear up. Brian Edwards is not having a single catch either. Darren Waller and Henry Ruggs. They are going off. And uh a defensive back for the Raiders will have a pick six because there's no white cornerbacks. And I am going to take the Raiders as well. You guys convince me for the 34th star fame by Dark Charity, your choice of the season. Now, the next game is going to be the nightcap. And uh, last time we did this, I can't remember if Colt really upset the crowd or if that was the uh, week. Was that? Was the week before when he really upset, and then the I week think, after yeah. he like he, he kinda, stepped it up a he little. He stepped bit. it up a little bit. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Well, yeah. We're gonna we're gonna let him go off. Without further ado, Colts from Sunday night. Sunday night. Oh, that was beautiful. That was good. That was a great step up. I think that might that's arguably one of the best of the season. That might have been one of the best ever. It could have been in three seasons doing this. That was. Mighty um, fine. Honestly, all of mine on season one that I did 
We're top notch. I think, I think I think it was just because we were just getting started, though. We didn't know what and your we were going was. on live. And we were mm-hmm. drunk. No, I don't think I was drunk, honestly. I think we were stoned. I wasn't. I think you were still smoking back then. Not Fair during enough. season one? Not since 2018, son. I think that, that was during 2018. Uh, 19, no, 19, 19. No, I was it's not. 2020. None of us were smoking marijuana. Yeah, true. Yeah, true, yeah. yeah we don't no. do that. Yeah, no. We were smoking crack. So we got, <laughs> we, we got the Seattle Seahawks going up against the Pittsburgh Steelers. Now, let the note be shown. And I'm saying this right now to both of you, and I want to use the honor system. If. If Blake Bortles is playing this game, if he had signed and he's playing this game, I don't think he is, and I don't think he has. But if he does, he will win, and the Seahawks will win because he literally is the daddy of the Pittsburgh Steelers. Fun fact, he is 3-0 and against the Pittsburgh Steelers. He fucks them up every single time they play him. They might sign him just because of that. Yeah, so... Just for the week. So... They'll sign him, but he'll still be the backup. No, they'll sign him, they'll start him, and they'll fuck you up. True. Yeah, yeah, so... That being said, if Geno Smith is a quarterback, though, I'm taking Pittsburgh. But... I think you have to choose one of them right now. Okay, well, I'll choose Pittsburgh, because I don't think they're signing Bo. Unfortunately. (laughs) I think you have to sign... You have to choose one. I'll take Pittsburgh. I don't think they're signing Boat. But, but if they sign Boat, by the end, by like what day is it today, Wednesday? They'd have to do it by tomorrow. And yeah. I don't think he'll know enough to Seattle play like that. Well, it doesn't matter. Not. He's got DK. Tyler yeah. Lockett. He's, he's got, just going to yeah. sling it. And he's got Pittsburgh. Oh, my God, dude. Over. DK, most overrated player in the league. Absolutely. Deontay Johnson was drafted in the same draft class as him. Deontay has more yards, more catches, and more touchdowns. Nobody talks about it. Yeah, DK sucks. Because Deontay Johnson doesn't do it flashy, I feel like. It's like... It like, doesn't matter if you do it flashy. Well, like, it if you do it. I know, but like DK's like on that team that's always getting primetime flashy. Mm-hmm. Like, you guys went 11-0, and 0, but nobody talked about you guys being offensively good. It was always like, oh my god, your guys' defense is so, so elite. Yeah, I'm just saying, since the 2019 time. draft class, Deontay is the best receiver out of that class. I can't think of any other... I can't either. I, I don't know any QBs out of that class. And I always feel like... There probably is. Who? 19? Um, 2019. Well, that's why Deontay Johnson doesn't get recognition either, is because you guys have so many. It's like receiver. Yeah, man. with like the the Seahawks, it's Tyler Lockett and DK. That's it. It's those two. There's nobody else. Nobody else stepped up. Nobody else has done anything. For well, you, you guys, you really don't think of receivers at Pittsburgh right now. Ever since I AB think, left, but Other yeah, than James Washington. but you still have Juju. You still have. Juju's gone. Claypool. Well, now he is. Yeah, okay, yeah. So Claypool. But those, that's what I'm Deontay. saying. That's why it's not There's, as flashy. The only reason people don't think of Deontay is because he's the only fucking Steelers receiver that doesn't have a TikTok account. And he's not flashy. That's what I'm saying. You have Probably, Juju, yeah. you have Claypool. Those are flashy guys. Mm, absolutely. And when you have those many people, it's like, yeah, it's like that's why he doesn't get the recognition because mm-hmm. Seattle has Tyler Lockett and DK. You guys have Claypool, Juju. You know what I'm yeah, saying? The There's was drafted you know, he last was a season, last year. Yeah, and he went off. He took well, over the league. Yeah. For receivers, I, I, I won't say he didn't go off. He did go off, but yeah, there double was digit one touchdowns. Game where he had four touchdowns. Yeah, <laughs> which is still you took over. He took is, over again. Yeah, he took over. He's on commercials now. So, um, so yeah, uh, Deontay's gonna outplay DK. By at least 67 yards <laughs> receiving. Taking, taking Pittsburgh? Absolutely. Yeah. How could I not take Pittsburgh? They're my team. I, there's one one week this year where I didn't take Pittsburgh, 
it was the right choice, but I have to take Pittsburgh. Thank you, yeah. I'm taking the Steelers, too. Uh, Seattle's not going to be able to keep it afloat with Geno. Geno. Their, their defense is not good, either. The J- Jamal Adams is probably the worst safety of all time. <laughs> and Maybe if it, it was in Seattle, it would be a different game. I don't even think it would. I really think Big Ben's just going to tear him up. Peck injury I think Najee not. Harris will tear him up. Oh, yeah, Najee Harris had a, a really good game last week. Well... Yeah, I think he, it's going to be the, game the show of Claypool and Deontay because mm-hmm. Juju just got hurt, and I'm, I think Big Ben's just going to be like, well, look at these two. Claypool, just, 137 yards receiving? Both of them over 100, at least. 11 yards rushing. And I'd say three TDs in between those two receivers. Three TDs like in between it. Deontay and Claypool. Like For a 34th. Star friend, I got dirty bird toys. Alrighty, and the cap things off. You know, I think this is a lackluster Monday night game. I don't know how you guys feel. We got the Buffalo Bills going up against the Tennessee Titans, and if there was an award for the crew for the most sad team or team that just upset it or expectations. I think Tennessee would be up there. I think that's a team that just hasn't performed up to par. I don't care if Julio's hurt. This is a team without Julio. That was a playoff team last year. They're still not doing great. Buffalo by fucking 40. Hold you to go. Yeah, I don't think the Texans score a point. The Texans, you didn't even Zero. get their name right. What? He said... Texans. The Bills and the Texans? It's the Titans, isn't it? It is the Titans. Oh. I wrote the Texans <laughs> twice. <laughs> uh, who is it? It's the, the Titans. Titans. The Bills and the Titans. Oh, my God. That messes everything up. No. I still got the Bills. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The Titans score 17. <laughs> <laughs> the Bills just score. I mean, the Titans just score a little bit more extra. Than what you expected. Uh, Larry, what do you got? For my upset of the week, I'm taking the Titans. I yeah, think, I didn't realize it. Yeah. yeah, I think, uh, you know, the Bills have been playing extremely hot. I don't think, I'm not taking anything away from the Bills. The Bills are there as a team. I think Leslie Frazier's a, a legitimate That's a bold elite, upset. A, it is a bold upset. And it's a, he's a legitimate great head coach. I just think for some reason... It's going to be one of those primetime Tannehill games where he throws for a ridiculous amount of yards to nobody. <laughs> yeah. And he just gets the job done. Two plus touchdowns. DH runs 130 in a tutty. And they get the job done against the Bills. 27 24. That's such a bold upset, man. I've hit a lot right. of bold upsets this right. year. And some of them have hit. Yeah, the, like the Giants in OT against the Saints last week. Yeah. I I hit. Let's. Were you were you battling any other upsets this week, or was that kind of the one you had? That was kind of my. I had a few early, but it was like I'm not gonna do it because I just don't see it as much as I could see the Titans doing it. Did you ever think of the Jags? I thought about that one, and I thought about the Eagles, which was a Fuck weird you, one. Coach. I think I said in week one the Jags. I will not pick with them. It's a fair trade off. Alright, guys. Well, this is the week to see if Tree makes up some points. We did do some fades. Larry, how many star frames did we end up with tonight? Six. Six? That is, I think, the lowest. That's pretty close to the lowest. Wait, did we all star frame on Thursday? Yep. We did. For the fifth straight. Which is nuts. Every first week, we are star training. Those Thursday night games are always so decisive for yes. us. <laughs> so we easy. know. Alrighty. Cole, do you have any final words for the people? No, I just hope uh, all of you have a good rest of your day. Larry? Have a wonderful weekend. Alrighty, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you so much for tuning in to the Cruise Picks, Locks, and Upsets. I hope you guys have a great 
rest of your day.